the American position is no, the only way this war can end is to defeat Putin. To my mind, that is both wrong and completely unrealistic. President Biden says we are going to win 100%. How do you defeat a country with 1,600 nuclear weapons? I don't think the U.S. government has thought this out at all. And I would say the same thing is true of the European Union. They talk about defeating Russia. Professor, one third, maybe a little less, of Ukraine territory is occupied by Russia. So insisting on negotiations right now means that Putin is winning. Well, I already gave my advice many times to the Ukrainian people and government, which is don't get caught in a proxy war between the U.S. and Russia because your country will be destroyed. Conflict in Ukraine is one of those conflicts that um, we all we hope that the Ukrainians or their leaders realize what is going on. Realize that maybe, just maybe, some compromise are needed. And that is the tragedy. I said to the Ukrainians, look at Afghanistan. Is that what you want to look at? 15 years of occupation and continued destruction, 20 years basically from the time of the U.S. invasion. Don't do it. I told them all my life the U.S. has been, quote, helping, in quotation marks, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Iraq, Syria, Libya. What kind of help? This ends up destroying the country. In the U.S., starting in 1992, the dominant group in American security policy came to believe that the U.S. is the world's only superpower. So the whole mindset in the U.S. East Coast elite is the U.S runs the world and should run the world. Don't you think that Ukraine, Ukrainians, they don't have the right to choose their own future? The Ukrainians have the right to choose their own economic future, their own political future, but not their own military future. Because choosing their own military future, for example, Ukraine saying, our future is that the U.S. has military bases in Ukraine. Is not a choice that Ukraine can make by itself. That's a threat to Russia. I would advise strongly the Mexican government, for example, do not make a military alliance with China. That's not your choice. That would be a threat. By the way, if Mexico one day said, we listen to the U.S., they said we can do anything we want, we're a free people, we choose China as our partner. I would predict that the U.S. invasion of Mexico would start within about a minute. Uh, I strongly advise the uh, Mexican government not to make a military alliance with China. Professor, how can we understand relatively hawkish position of the European allies. I'm really disappointed in European leaders right now because I know privately they have all sorts of views that they are not explaining to their public. I've spoken to the heads of government in Europe where they've said to me, for example, NATO enlargement, very bad idea. In fact, Schultz went to Russia in uh, January, February 2022, and said to Putin, as long as I'm chancellor, NATO's not expanding. And Putin looked at him and said, yeah, how long are you going to be chancellor? I, I need the United States as my counterpart, not you. And he told the truth. This is a U.S. alliance. It's not a German alliance. Because, like, we have all seen, right, when America goes in, what followed next is destruction. People died. Buildings are being destroyed. Communities are being ruined. 
And then after a couple of years, they pull out and then they abandon the people to their fate. We saw that in Afghanistan, we saw that in Syria, we saw that in Libya. In fact, whenever they leave, they left the country in a more difficult and worse state than it was when they came in. So this whole thing in Ukraine, we are all just hoping that the Ukrainians realize what is going on. And I understand that it's their country. And no one will want to sit away part of their country to other people. But at this point in time, what is the way forward? What is the way forward? Is this never-ending conflict between the two of them? Because believe me, this might just end up to be like the conflict in Afghanistan that took more than 20 years. It might just end up being like that. So the earlier a solution can be made to this problem, the better. Because remember who is winning, right? The military industrial complex are winning big time. That is the war machinery. They are building a lot of killing machines and they are selling it and Ukraine is buying it. So they are making a lot of money. And even after all this destruction, they still need to rebuild Ukraine. And those contracts will be awarded to some American companies or some Western companies. They are still going to make money. But the people who have died, the Ukrainians who have died, have lost their lives. Conflict is never a good thing. Conflict is never a great thing. If it's to be avoided, it should be avoided. Because in a conflict like this one, in a conflict between one giant nation and one small nation, the smaller nation will lost the most. But you guys out there, let me hear your opinion about the Russian-Ukraine crisis. And what do you think the Ukrainians should do? Should they keep on fighting or should they compromise on certain things and try to bring this whole conflict to an end? And secondly, do you think that the West is using Ukraine as a proxy? And if so, what do they stand to gain by seeing Ukraine in total and complete destruction? Share your thoughts and opinions with us in the comment section below because like always, we love hearing what you have to say. And also, please don't forget to like this video, share this video, follow our Facebook page, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel because little did of good we, like the one you're doing just now, help us a lot and we shall forever be grateful to you. So thank you very much for doing just that. And like always, see you in the next one.